This What's Working with Cam Marston podcast is brought to you by Stella Artois Beer. What's Working with Cam Marston is brought to you by Stella Artois Beer. Stella Artois is a perfect beer for celebration. Nothing caps off a big sale, hitting your incentive goals, or a profitable quarter like a round of Stella's. Brewed first in 1708 as a special Christmas brew, today Stella is a gift for everyone to enjoy year-round. Stella Artois. Find it wherever fine beer is sold. Welcome, everyone, to another episode of What's Working. I'm Cam Marston. What's Working is the radio show designed to bring you the trends shaping the workplace, the workforce, and the marketplace around you. We find the guests that can speak well about the trends that are influencing their business. And as they tell us about the trends and as they tell us their stories and as they tell us how they reacted to the trends, our hope is to help you get a little bit better at what it is that you do by hearing something they say that you can apply to your own workplace, your own business, perhaps someplace outside your business as well. The trends, the trends, and I love to identify the trends. Years ago, I had a guy introduce me to this, and I may have mentioned this on this show before, but it bears repeating. There are three things that influence the business world out there. They are fads, trends, and principles. The guy's name is David Zock, Z-A-C-H. And if you want to see some really enlightening content, go find David Zock's website. Again, David Zock, Z-A-C-H. And he talks about fads, trends, and principles. And I'll break them down real quick for you. I won't do it justice the way David does, but break it down real quick. Fads come and go. They're in and out. You, uh, If you're on the front end, if you're in business and you're on the front end of a fad, you'll do well. But it's really hard to catch up to fads. Fads we are very familiar with around the holidays, what the fad gift of the year is. And we see the parents in Walmart fighting hand to fist at the doors of Walmart on, you know, what is it, Black Friday to try to get that fad gift for their children. In the the the, the season of loving kindness, parents brawl on the streets to get the right gift for their children. Anyway, it's a fad. Fads come and go. Again, you'll benefit by being on the front end of the fad if you catch it, but it's hard to catch up to a fad. Dave's advice, Dave Zock's advice, ignore the fads. Watch them. Be humored by them, but don't get caught up in them. Longer than fads, though, are trends. Trends simply last longer, and businesses must react to trends. Trends last long, they're influential, and businesses must react to them. They must do what they can to acknowledge the trends in their business. In my world, for example, in the seminar world, in the workshops, in the keynote speaking world that I've been a part of for years, one of the trends that we had to acknowledge was a TED Talk. 18 to 20 minutes, needed to be very concise, needed to be uh, have a moral at the end, the TED Talk format. So all of us that had been doing one-hour keynotes were obligated to learn the TED Talk format and apply our stuff to the TED Talk format. A fad in my business was any sort of new software that changed the slides. There's a fatty new software that people want that presents the content a little bit differently than Keynote or PowerPoint. I can't remember what the name was, but it was a fad piece of software. Trends for me would be the TED Talk. You have trends in your business, things that are influencing the way your business is shaped and the way it looks and the way it operates, that as a business owner, manager, leader, whatever, you must acknowledge the trends. The principles are unchanging. The principles are fundamental. The principles are things that you and I have to acknowledge and they don't come and go. For example, customer service is a principle. Sound financial management is a principle. Listening to your customers is a principle. Dealing honestly and with integrity and with character is a principle. You can wander away from those principles to your own detriment. Fads, trends, principles. Fads come and go. Trends last longer. Principles are unchanging. Trends is what I look for. And one of the trends that is shaping, has been around for a while, is, believe it or not, bacon. Bacon is a trend. People love the stuff. There's articles, there's memes, there's websites devoted to bacon. 
And I was initially skeptical. My wife, for example, she loves bacon. She considers herself the bacon authority of the world. Well, I'd met Billy Stitt with Billy's Bacon at a Chamber of Commerce event. And I thought, really? Bacon? But it was about three, four months ago that I came across this product in a in a retail location in Baldwin County here in Alabama. And I thought, oh, yeah, yeah, Billy Stitt. I remember meeting him. Bought the bacon, brought it home, cooked it, served it to my wife, the the authentic, the connoisseur in our household. And for my knowledge, the, the, the biggest connoisseur of bacon I know. And she came back with, this is the best bacon I've ever had. And I tried it, and it was something different, folks. It was something different. And when that happened, I said, Billy Stitt has identified a trend, which is the bacon thing, and he's capitalizing on the trend. This trend is going to go. I need to know Billy Stitt. I want to introduce myself to him, and I want him to tell me his story. And that's what we are about to get into. When we come back, you and I are going to meet Billy Stitt, the owner of Billy's Bacon. He does other things as well, but we're going to meet the man behind the pork. I don't know if that sounds right. Billy, I apologize if that's not right. Billy Stitt, when we come back from break. You're listening to What's Working. I'm Kim Marston. What's Working with Cam Marston is brought to you by Stella Artois Beer. Now offering the purchase of the Stella Artois Chalice, a beautiful stemmed glass with the Stella logo. The purchase of each Stella Artois Chalice provides five years of clean water for someone in one of 13 developing countries around the world. Learn more at StellaArtois.com. Stella Artois. Find it wherever fine beer is sold. At Spring Hill Toyota, it's just that easy. From our three-day exchange to free car washes, the benefits of the Spring Hill Advantage make the choice easy to see. We make it easy to own. Every vehicle comes with Toyota Care, plus our no-cost maintenance plan with free tire rotations and oil changes for four years. Get peace of mind with free roadside assistance 24-7. And don't forget, it's easy to buy your car 100% online. Visit SpringHillToyota.com today. It's just that easy. I'm Eric Cromwell. The law firm of Cromwell & Associates can help guide your decisions regarding the life you've created with estate planning tools like wills and trusts. We've planned meetings with first-generation business owners and large multi-generational family groups. With locations in Mobile and Fairhope, we can assist you and your family through every stage of life. To learn more, call 251-605-9075 or find Cromwell & Associates on Facebook. When you make the right decision, it feels good, like picking the perfect accent rug or choosing a good night's sleep over an all-night crime show binge. It feels really good to make the right insurance decision, too. I'm State Farm Agent Allison Horner, and that's why I'm right here in Mobile to help you select the right protection at the right price. I'll make sure you understand your State Farm coverages so you'll know what to expect if the unexpected happens. With me as your State Farm Agent, it's easy to make the right choice. You can come by, call, or click allisonhorner.com. When you want the real deal, like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. You're listening to What's Working. I'm Cam Marston in the studio today with Bill E. Stitt. Billy Stitt with Billy's Bacon. Folks, is there ever a bad time or an inappropriate time to talk about bacon? Who doesn't enjoy the conversation around bacon except for maybe the hogs themselves? Billy, thank you for your time. Welcome to What's Working. Happy to be here. A a, a boutique bacon, a small batch bacon, a craft bacon. Where did the idea come from? It's been in my head for a long time. Uh, I've always been a foodie since I was a teenager back in Yazoo City, Mississippi. And uh, as I, you know, progressed through the restaurant industry and hospitality industry, bacon always seemed to be a part of what I was doing. I personally think the hog is magical, except for the feral hogs that we have a problem with in the way. But there's so much good food that can come out of this creature. The 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 cuts of meat, I, I, I love them all. It seems like I've never had anything that I haven't disliked. Is it only bacon that you do or are there other things? At this time, due to space, we just make bacon. Um, and my ultimate goal is to use my process and, and utilize every portion of the hog. Yeah. I remember watching a show with, oh gosh, he's one of these 
uh, Cooks or former Cooks is now a television host or something. And he went into Louisiana and he documented this big hog cookout and they used every part of that hog. That's and, right. And it was delicious. All right. So tell me how you came up with the recipe that okay. you use today. Well, I mean, it's a, it's a lifelong endeavor. Uh, I, I wanted to be as natural and pure and traditional as possible. Uh, the the original goal, which is still is today, was to produce bacon the way our ancestors did. I wanted to do it as simple and 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 direct as when they would go out and hunt and and kill some sort of animal, and they weren't looking for flavor or anything like that. They were like, "Okay, wait a minute, how do we make sure we preserve this meat so we can make it through the winter?" Um, so I was looking for a very traditional. Just basic process, and that's that's where I landed after years and years of practice. Yeah, and and the ingredients used is this secret to a degree, but it's it's very simplistic. It's it's heavy salt, uh, it's brown sugar, real molasses, um, and it's a timing and a temperature thing. It's a and it's a whole lot. And you know the magical ingredient, of course, is that they're serenaded. You've got to sing to your pork bellies. You know what? I'm glad to hear you say that. <laughs> I once went through a, f- a phase, and you're going to think I'm crazy, and you're going to stand up and walk out. So I, I say this with hesitancy, a phase of growing orchids. I went through this freakish orchid phase, and I would pay my children, and they hated it. I would pay them to go sing to the orchids. I think that's wonderful. Oh, but the orchids, okay. well, they, they grew, and they smiled, and they were greener, and their, their blooms were bigger. And uh, my kids for Christmas would give me coupons. Dad, you can use this coupon on me when you're ready and it read on it sing to orchid <laughs> i would go cash them in <laughs> <laughs> that's all well when they want to add to their their musical resume they can come over and sing to my my bacon anytime yeah do you amplify the singing voices to the bacon or must it be unamplified it it's uh naturally coming through the stage at the restaurant because by the way the, the the usda facility is right behind the wall of our, our live music stage yeah tell me about the restaurant did, sure. did the bacon begin the concept begin at the restaurant Restaurant, or did the restaurant come out of the bacon? The restaurant started first, um, and I had a whole bunch of leftover gear and equipment, and the, so I just kind of built a little room behind the stage where I would cater out of and 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 work on you know recipes and uh, would toy with bacon. You know, on a, you know every week I would make a different little batch of bacon, and and I would also order bacon from all these companies from all over the, you know, anywhere that said they had great bacon. And nothing really ever landed with what where I wanted it to be. Mm-hmm. So after researching everything and then, you know, coming up with my, my process, uh, it, it just all fell in place. And then people started, you know, we started, we stopped buying other people's bacon and I started making my bacon for the restaurant. And then chefs would come and get it and then people would come and get it and I was like oh my gosh I've got, you know if, if I'm going to be doing this I, I I could sell it out of here but if I want to sell it for resale I need to get USDA certified and that was a big hurdle um, that I was able to tackle and uh, and that's something I'm very proud of to be a USDA facility and it, is the USA certification come as a result of cleanliness processes they need to see the ingredients what it, does that involve it's very detailed and it's and it's and it's a good program it it keeps everybody from just trying to do something in the meat world you know you've got to know what you're doing you have to write out a hazard analysis plan and a HACCP and and be able to document every step of the process and try to identify any potential hazards that could come 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 along as you're processing and to make sure you just have a great clean systematic process so that you you're providing a safe safe product to the public tell me about bacon comes from a hog tell me about your hogs well i wish i could get them from here and and i get asked that question quite often in the beginning people almost harassed me about it they're like well i'm not buying it if it's not alabama hogs i'm like find me some and Quite often, people will approach me and say, hey, would you be interested in buying my pigs? Or, you know, I'm like, well, I, right now I just need the bellies and, you know, I need them peeled and trimmed. And I need to know that, that, that there are no hormones, no growth antibiotics. I need to see where you raise them. I want to know they can go outside and play in the clover or go inside and write in coloring books. I want to make sure they're treated right. Mm-hmm. And I'm not saying there aren't a few small f- places around here that do that, but there aren't enough. Yeah. So some people would say, okay, I can do that. And then they would say, how much do you need a week? And I would give them the number and 
it just kind of ended there. That's a big number. Right. So I'm, I'm in southern Iowa, southern Illinois. Started off with uh, three small farmers. Now I'm up to about 25 that I get 100% of their bellies. Are you serious? Yeah. How many hogs is that? It's a lot of hogs. You're not going to tell me a number, are you? It's, it's, it's a lot of hogs. It is a lot of hogs. Yeah. So they sell you the bellies. They sell everything else to other people. Yes. And now I have used my process on the butts and the shoulders and the ribs, and it is amazing. Um, whenever we do pull pork at the restaurant, we sell out. Yeah. Um, but once I get enough space and, and grow to where I need to, which, you know what? Why rush it? I mean, I've got a good thing, but I do want to get to where I have a larger facility where I can do all the hogs, but all the pieces of the hogs, it's just going to explode then. Yeah, yeah. Do you want that day or do you fear that day? No, I don't fear it at all. I, 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 I look for it, but I've got a great team. I have some wonderful people in my organization that are the reason that we're still here and that we're growing. And it has to fit and work for our team and and I want it to be here, you know. I mean, I want to, I want to, I want to, I want to have a company that creates jobs. I want to have a company that creates longevity, and produces an incredible product. Yeah. So you're wedded to this neck of the woods. Yeah. Listen, well, I've been here 23 years. So I'm not leaving. Yeah. Where is home? Yazoo City, Mississippi. Oh, you said that. Yeah. Yazoo yeah. City, the cultural center of the universe. I would say so. Yeah. There's a lot that comes out of it's Yazoo City. A great, great town. Most of it never goes back, but yeah. they come out of Yazoo <laughs> Valid City. Valid point. Yeah. Valid point. Um, so what is the? So you get a, a refrigerated truck on a Monday, let's say, two or three days a week of pork bellies. Mm-hmm. And from there, are they sliced in the way that you no, like? No, not at all. They're just pure, fresh bellies. Yeah. Right off the hog. Off the hog. Right. And you then begin your process. Correct. Because it's an eight-day curing that process. That was my yeah. question. Eight it's days. It's not seven. It's not nine. It's eight. Yeah. And that's the magical number we kind of landed at where it, it, it accepts the cure and it pulls the liquid out of the belly and it really just gets it prepared to smoke. Yeah. Um, and then, then we smoke it um, using hickory. You know, that's going to be probably one of your next questions. Everybody, you is know. It, is get, it local hickory or do you import your hickory from Iowa as well? I, I don't import it from Iowa. I get it from several different sources. Yeah. And, I, you know, the, you know that's a, another thing that will help us grow when we can get that by the truckload and stuff like that. Yeah. yeah. Do you have local, you know, um, lots of trees down of the past hurricanes? Have you gotten any, you know, front yard hickory trees? I did not. I wish I could have. Yeah. Uh, and I tried. It just um, – I was, to be honest with you, trying to survive myself. Sure. We lost about 18 trees all around the facility and on top of the facilities. Yeah. It was pretty bad. You guys back up to full capacity now? We are. Um, and we, we had some repairs that we had to do that, that slowed us down for several weeks. But uh, we're we're back up and, and, and really hoping to start pumping it out more. Is there a species? I want to go back to the hogs, these Iowan hogs. Are there a species of hogs that you prefer? They're heritage breeds, Berkshire Reds, Chantilly Whites. Yeah, and th- yeah. that you describe those as heritage breeds. What does yeah. that mean? It's um, it's not a designer pig. It's not uh, it's not been manipulated a bunch. It's uh, it's heritage meaning it's it's it's, it's a true breed that's been around for. for Centuries. Yeah, not a a a faddish. Right. It's you know. it's something it, like like I said. It's where it all started. Oh, but yeah, yeah, yeah. And how old are they when they slaughtered? About eight months. It takes a good eight months of a lifespan to go from uh, from birth to to bacon. Oh, really? Yeah. So once they get older than eight months, the two year old pig doesn't taste as good. Uh I, you know, the, just this industry just needs them so much. I, I, I don't get that. Oh, I, really? I just I don't ever hear of that. Yeah. yeah. Ever tried a feral hog? Goodness knows you could have a load of those. Many, many times. And I am not anti-wild hog, but I'm not going to make it in my facility, yeah. <laughs> being a USDA facility. And, and where I struggle with them is, uh, gr- granted, they need to be, you know, eradicated. They're just way, way too many. But um they all taste different. Oh, do they you, really? You could bring me six from the same hunt, and I could prepare them the exact same way 
uh, and I do for private event catering and stuff like that. But they could all taste completely different. Was in Spain one time, yeah. and the amount of money or the, the 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 prestige of the hog of the of the meat that they create yeah. there. I mean, you pay a lot, and they have these things. I remember seeing this hog is it's it, the highest priced shaves of meat were from hogs that have been raised on acorns. That's right, it's called a jaman. Ah, so it's here we raised. go. You know what I'm talking about. I'm right. thinking, yeah. I got those. In Clark County, yeah. they've been raised on acorns. That's right. <laughs> they're, they're, That's right. They've got a little bit of an attitude. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And uh, they don't like me, but uh, I wonder if they'd be interested in these in Spain. And I have a feeling there's something different about them. I'm with yeah. Billy Stitt, owner of Billy's a Restaurant and the owner of Billy's Small Batch Bacon. We're talking bacon on what's working today. We'll be right back after this break. Hi, I'm David Nelson, brewmaster and owner of Braided River Brewing in downtown Mobile. We make drinkable, flavorful craft beer perfect for life on the Gulf Coast. So pick up one of our six packs before your next adventure or stop by our tap room for a relaxing afternoon with friends. Follow us on social media for the latest beer releases and events and ask for a Braided River at your favorite bars and restaurants. Thanks for your support. We look forward to sharing our beers with you. This is Cam Marston, and I'm with Cajun Mike of E3 Termite and Pest Control. Cajun Mike, if a homeowner thinks they have termites, do you offer inspections? What about a someone buying a new home? Can you come in and take a look and see if there are termites in there at a new home? Yeah, basically what we would do on a home uh, above and beyond anyone else is we actually do a thorough inspection. But above that, we will use infrared imaging that will allow us to see problems in the wall and at times can tell us if there's anything going on that's fantastic, KJ Mike. How can people find you? They can find me at e3pest.com. That's the letter E, the number three, pest.com. King Solomon wrote, without consultation, plans are frustrated, but with many counselors, they succeed. The law firm of Cromwell & Associates has the legal counsel that can help your business succeed with experience in LLCs, corporations, and tax. I'm Eric Cromwell. Our law firm has locations in Mobile and Fairhope. Call 251-605-9075 or search for Cromwell and Associates on Facebook. And let's discuss how we can help you. We're back. You're listening to What's Working. I'm Cam Marston. We're in the studio with Billy Stead. He's the owner of Billy's Small Batch Bacon as well as Billy's Restaurant. I, I, um... I'll admit to you, when I first bought the bacon and put it in, I thought, you know, how good can this be? Bacon is already good. How good can this be? And then I fed a piece to my bacon consumer wife who considers herself the authority on all things bacon. And she should be. And I don't. I, I think if something were to happen to me, she would be on your doorstep pledging her undying love just to get access to the bacon as, as, as much as she could. It was that good. I remember thinking, I have just become extraneous in her life after she just had this bacon here. When did you know you were on to something? Oh, gosh. Um, I would have to say in college uh, when I uh, had a little smoker and, and um, I was always process oriented. I wanted to follow recipes and I wanted to... So I would, I would say the first time I made it in college, I did it the third time. The first and second times were all kind of trial and error. But the third time I made it as a college student, um, I knew there was going to be a place in my life where I was going to explode with this. Really? It was, yeah. it was, a, it was a message from early on. Oh yeah. oh, yeah. So I suspect that in college, if I had had somebody that was experiencing or experimenting with bacon all the time, they would have become my best friend. Had a lot of great friends in college. As a matter of fact, some of my smokers are named after them. Oh, really? Well, of course, yeah. You you name a smoker out of your uh, taste testers. Why not? Why not? Yeah, they're, they're named after my college roommates and, and childhood friends. Yeah, that's yeah. awesome. How many smokers do you have? I have six right now. Yeah. I like ten, actually, but uh, r rolling six. How do you—you you said you had a great team. Finding a team that has as much of an interest in this product must have been a little bit of a challenge, or did they show up? It It, it is a challenge, and it always is. I, I, I guess they just saw how passionate I was about this, and um, 
they're very passionate. They didn't want they want to do something that 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 leaves a mark. Mm-hmm. And they they're very proud of their work. And that's just really a huge part of why we're so successful is, you know, sometimes as an owner, you, you're just like, push, push, push. I want to do this. I got to do this. It's got to happen now. And they'll slow me down, not in a bad way, in the correct way. It's just a good good feeling to know that we, we look after each other. Yeah. Because we all want to grow. We know that, you know, we can't keep spinning our wheels. We've got to make so much for it to be profitable, for it to be successful. But rushing that is not what it's about. Are there trends in the industry, sure. food service, bacon, mm-hmm. whatever it may be? Oh, Give yeah. me a sense of some of the trends that you're dealing with right now. You know, the, the, the burnt ends are a big, that's a big word in all the restaurant industry right now. Everybody wants the burnt ends, the bits, the, the end pieces of the, of after a smoke or, or a roast. Um, there's uh, unsliced bacon, which is really kind of our baby. People love our product because they can order it unsliced and then they can slice it as thick as they want or yeah. can feed it, cook it in its own fat. Or uh, So that's really a big deal. The, the candied bacon, the caramelized bacon, the chocolate bacon, are, they're, 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 all, they're all wonderful and interesting trends. We do a dessert at the restaurant called Billy's Chocolate Belly, which is a confit pork belly bites um, built into like a... Uh, um, a checkerboard where every other piece is the confit pork belly bite and a salted caramel brownie bite pressed together so you can't really tell what's what. And we put a bourbon brown sugar glaze over the top and a and a Bordeaux cherry. So the bacon is a dessert. Yes, it's sweet and savory. No kidding. Yeah. So how long do these uh, food trends last? I mean, are these a year, two years? Bacon is always going to be there. Bacon is always yeah. going to be there. But uh, chocolate bacon. Ch- I, who, who knows? I, I think there's a place for it. Um, number one, you know, in, in our restaurant, we've always got a chocolate brownie and we've always got bacon. So I think we'll always have the, 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 the blended, the chocolate belly. It, does the restaurant serve to experiment with the bacon? A little bit of both. They both complement each other. The um, We're a burger joint with bacon. Yeah. And I mean, that's the whole thing. It's Billy's restaurant. We focus on great certified Angus beef burgers with Billy's bacon on top of them. Yeah. We, we even have a blended burger, which is seven ounces of uh, certified Angus beef and, and a couple ounces of Billy's small batch bacon blended together into a patty with a soft fried egg on it, Wickles pickles, a local bun. So it's basically a, a an Alabama Burger, everything on it's from Alabama. Yeah, I may ask you to marry me, and if I, if I, if <laughs> after that description, if I actually say that, please ignore me, okay. and we'll just keep moving on. Deal. Okay. It's like I had a massage one time, and I had to tell that person, if I ask you to marry me, just don't back away. I'm not serious about it. It just came out. I don't right. mean it. Sure. Um, right. So distribution. Yes. I've picked your stuff up at Rouse's. Yes. Where else is it available? And and, and tell me about the story sure. of. Of getting uh, bacon and distribution and what you had okay. to do. Well, it it's it's the it's what I'm good at. I'm 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 good at selling. I'm good at telling my story. I'm good at promoting something I believe in. And um and I have all these wonderful connections in the food industry from back in the days where my father sold packaging. Um and then of course you know since I was a teenager being in the restaurant industry, I guess my, my first distributor. Well, before I had distributors, I took it myself and. Piggly Wiggly went out of their way to say, hey, we, we want your product. You well, know? it's a fit, right? Yeah, yeah, Piggly, yeah, the, Wiggly, yeah. and Bacon. You, they couldn't say no. Exactly. The Manning family in Fairhope was just like, how do we make this work? And and it challenged me and it pushed me to, to get the packaging all lined up and the UPC codes and all of the things that are required to be in a grocery store. And I, I, I owe so much to them. They just really helped me get into the stores, but outside of you know that large concept, there's um, Allegra, um, Greer's, um, all of these other t- uh, tiny little uh, um, Burris Market. Um, I'm leaving out tons. You know, Apple Market in Pensacola. There's a you know, all these little places that said you know hey send us a dozen, send us 24 pounds, and you know and then it just kind of kept rolling on. But in regard to distribution, um, I knew I didn't want to uh, have trucks and 
all of that. I'm, I just I don't want to make bacon. I don't want to have a trucks and stuff. I just decided that didn't fit what I wanted it to do. So mm-hmm. I, um, U.S. Foods approached me, and we we're now in two of their warehouses, and then that's been very successful. Um, and then um, following them, Peroni and Sons, a wonderful fourth generation food distributor out of out of Metairie, Louisiana, New Orleans area. Um, so I'm now in their warehouses. And then Benny Keith approached me and said, hey, how do we make this happen? So you didn't make sales calls on any of these places. They all came across your bacon. That and they knew me because I was buying from them for the restaurant. Yeah. yeah. So it's a, it's a give and take. And. And it, and back to the trucking thing, um, everybody knows you know we got to have trucks on the road, but there's the thing called a backhaul. You know when the, when the when a truck drops everything off and they're empty, that's that's how we saw the solution of getting my bacon into their warehouses. I see. Yeah. So the trucks would make deliveries. Mm-hmm. Food service companies would yeah. make deliveries, and on the way home, mm-hmm. come put some bacon aboard. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that makes yeah. sense. And it, it and that's the way it needs to be. Yeah. I need to. Buy ingredients from these great companies that can help me get it because there's probably another maker making the things that I like, and they don't want trucks either. So why don't we use the distribution you know, system that's out there? Right, right. And it's worked out, obviously. That's fabulous. Do you deliver it to them frozen? Yes. Everything I sell is frozen. And, you know, people will ask, does that affect the flavor? I actually think it helps it. Really? Oh, my gosh. There's no course. when you, We freeze it so fast it doesn't get the ice crystals in it and things like that. But it, it just— it just makes it last longer. It just, yeah, I think it gives it a better flavor. Now, I know, I don't know a lot about grocery business, but I know shelf space is important and you have to fight for that and you have to pay for that and you have to, you know, buddy, buddy, tell me uh, what the challenges are there. Um, where my bacon is the most successful is when a meat market manager or the deli manager says, let's put it next to the steaks. Let's put it next to the beef tenderloins. Let's put it next to these beautiful hand-cut porterhouse T-bones, whole ribeyes, um, when they kind of bury it in the bacon, it does okay. And mm-hmm. It does well. But when they put it next to the steaks, it just blows up. So can it go next to the steaks frozen? Of course. Oh, yeah. They come in 12-pound cases. So they pull out five or six at a time and keep them stocked. I mean, Pharaoh Piggly Wiggly's got, you know, man, they, I can't tell you how much they sell. But, uh... It, it's just got it's got a thirty day shelf life, uh, fresh, a year frozen. It's much longer than that, but that's 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 the preferred and standard. Yeah, process. yeah. When we come back from break, let's talk about what's next. I mean, I, I've heard stories of people saying, "I couldn't wait to get into Walmart, but that first order nearly killed me." I'm curious if that's part of your dream, or it, it would ruin the small batch flavor of it if you're distributed through Walmart. Let's get into that back from bake. We're talking with Billy Stitt. He's the owner of Billy's Restaurant as well as Billy's Small Batch Bacon. We're talking bacon on what's working. I'm Cam Marston. We'll be right back. What's Working with Cam Marston is brought to you by Stella Artois Beer. Stella Artois is a perfect beer for celebration. Nothing caps off a big sale, hitting your incentive goals, or a profitable quarter like a round of Stella's. Brewed first in 1708 as a special Christmas brew, today Stella is a gift for everyone to enjoy year-round. Stella Artois. Find it wherever fine beer is sold. This is Cam Marston with Cajun Mike of E3 Termite and Pest Control. Cajun Mike, houses on pilings can have termites eat their way up inside the piling and enter the house. The homeowner never knows about it, but your company offers protection. Tell me about that. Yeah, Cam. Uh, Basically, uh, what we have designed is a program, and what we do is we will actually drill to the center of the piling and put a product in the center that will stop the termites from coming up into the home. Stucco exteriors as well? Correct. How can people find you, Cajun Mike? They can find me at e3pest.com. That's the letter E, the number three, pest.com. If you're a small business owner, you know how important it is to be here for your customers. I'm State Farm agent Allison Horner, and I also run a small business in Mobile. I'm here to help protect your small business. Stop in and talk with me, Allison Horner, State Farm agent. I'm Eric Cromwell. The death of a loved one is never easy. 
The law firm of Cromwell & Associates understands this and will help you with the complexity and legal experience needed to navigate probate court and estate administrations. Our experience has saved our clients buckets of money and years in time. Our law firm has locations in Mobile and Fairhope. Call 251-605-9075 or find Cromwell & Associates on Facebook. Billy Stid is the owner of Billy's Bacon as well as Billy's Restaurant. It's a delicious product that I happened across. I'd heard of it, and then I tried it, and now I'm a disciple, not just a fan, but a disciple of the product. Um, what are your goals? What's the plan going forward? It's, a, it's two steps. Uh, we want to progress the restaurant, of course. We would like to have little Billy's out there. Uh, something very simple where you order at the counter and you, you get our bacon cheeseburgers and uh, so, of course, we're supplying those um, and with the home base in Fairhope. And then with the bacon, we want to grow. But uh, we, being everywhere is not what it's about. Yes, I would like to be in all states, and we kind of already are. But I want to be in the great places in each state. When, when you go into a, a town like Cincinnati and you're like, okay, where's the, where's the best place to get a steak? And, or where, where, what are the top three restaurants? I, and I don't have to be on their menu year-round. I just would like for the chef to say, you know what, let's let's get some of this Billy's bacon, let's feature it, um, and put it in a rotation to where you know you know it's going to be a special for this amount of time, or we're going to wrap some prawns in it, or, or or you know just treat it like a center of the plate premium protein. Mm-hmm. Um, don't you know? And again, it, it's not a buffet bacon; it doesn't it doesn't belong there. Um, where it, where it really is successful in restaurants is a place that's that's doing great and has a great burger or bacon that they can add bacon to or or, or bacon on their menu. And it, keep buying the same bacon you're buying, but add some Billy's and then say, hey, for two dollars more, you can get this guy Billy's bacon. The guy has it sung to in Fairhope, Alabama. That's you right. Know? That's right. And, <laughs> and that that works really well, and and it's good for both the restaurant tour and for my little business. Yeah. I see in this piece of uh, material you brought me, you got Fairhope Brewing Company on yeah. here. Is there a partnership with them? They're my friends. They really are. And, I mean, they're they're a maker like me, and, and I love them. So we always carry several of their beers, and we like to do tastings. And we're always kind of batting around ideas about, um, a, you know, bacon and beer and fun stuff like that. Yeah. So whatever they do, I, I want to be there and promote. And, I mean, when I see that l- lovely pelican on a, on a tap handle, that just excites me. So I'm just – I'm proud of Fairhope, and, 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 I, and I really think they're a great maker. I have had them on the show, and I agree with you. I yeah. like them a lot. They're nice folks. Really good people. Very good people. Um, it's – your bacon is sometimes twice as much as what is sitting next Can to. Be. Sure. Well, it, my, my raw ingredients cost more than a pack of finished good bacon. Yeah. I mean, there's some other wonderful bacons out there, and I'm not knocking any of them. So when you have to justify the price, is there a, a methodology where you sure. do that? Well, you know, you've got to price it to 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 make money, of course, and, and to, to, to grow the brand. Um but I get hit with that question quite a bit. You know, uh, somebody will come and say, oh, my gosh, I just went down to the condo and, you know, I bought, you know, five pounds of your bacon and all the kids got up and just hammered it. And it's so expensive. And I'm like, slow down a little bit. Let me give you a little story. Keep buying the grocery store bacon. That's not going to bother me a bit. Buy that. Set that out. Let the kids get up in the morning. Send them to the beach to have fun. And break out Billy's adult bacon. <laughs> I think this show just took a turn for a different angle when we talk about Billy's adult bacon. I'm assuming you're talking about what is sold in the package out of the grocery store there, not another business that you offer. There's not another business I'm offering right now. Yeah, that's great. So it's not for the kids. This is for the adults. The kids (laughs) won't appreciate it. The kids will appreciate it, but they will hammer it. They they have no stop button when it comes to bacon. The big question is always, you know, how much bacon do I cook? It doesn't matter. It will all get eaten. There is no leftover bacon. No, that's true. Yeah. Yeah. The, The adult bacon comes out after the kids have left the condo. 
That's right. You pull the shades and you turn on some Lou Rawls and you pull out the Billy's adult bacon. Exactly. Perhaps we should change the subject before this goes <laughs> a little bit too far. You know, bacon, bacon is uh, bringing America together. Do you pal around with other, you, you mentioned Fairhope Brewery, but other kind of protein people that do something you need. I'm thinking of Lane. I can't think of Lane's last name, but we interviewed him on the show one time. Murder Point Oysters. Love those guys. No kidding. Uh, anything they do, I want to be part of. Well, I imagine yeah. they may say the same thing yeah. about you, and you yeah. guys could pull together and oh, say, yeah. we're not everybody's oyster. Oh, we're not everybody's right. bacon, but right. we found a niche of what we do, and we do it well. And do it great. When the kids want to eat oysters, right. we throw them some stuff, but once they leave, right. we pull out daddy's oysters. Right. That's right. Yeah. Exactly right. Yeah. So do you network with these people? Do you do you we, willfully and intentionally gather to talk about your challenges? We end up at the same places. Yeah. Um, the um, Southern Food, uh, well, there was a um, a big event in Nashville a few years ago where, where um, they were looking for makers. Um, so he, his oysters were used in quite a few recipes by chefs and quite a few used my bacon. And um like, there's a chef over in Pensacola, Chef Irv Miller, who's like the guru of oysters. He's written like three books on them at Jackson's Steakhouse on Palafox. Yeah. And uh, he puts my bacon under all of his oysters. So, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm always looking for a great maker, especially the protein people. Um, there's several oyster companies around here that just blow it out of the park, blow it out of the water, for lack of a better word. Yeah. yeah. So you said the the bacon is available in 50 states. I assume that's shipping. You can yes, order it. You can, well, you can order it. I mean, Hawaii, Guam. I mean, we ship it everywhere. Do you really? Get Canada. Um, but now I'm not saying it's in stores that's right. in all 50 states. There's, there's uh, St. Louis has got a cool little concept called um, um, the wine and cheese store. They've got four or five locations and they order a good load every month. Um, it's a place on Rodeo Drive that sells my bacon. Get out. No, not at all. There's a couple of places in Manhattan, uh, Chicago. There's several in Atlanta. Um, but it, And that's the fun thing is I get these crazy phone calls. And I'm about to meet with some guys in Colorado that want to put it in all the ski resorts. And, and um, so it's, But it's it's got to be treated right, and that's what makes it so special. Are you surprised by any of this? I'm happy about it. Sure. I'm elated. I'm, uh, I mean, it's prayers answered. Uh, I mean, I know I don't ever get up in the morning and go, what the heck am I doing? I, there's a lot of times I'm like, oh, my gosh, this thing's running over me. But I get up in the morning doing what I love, and that really, really makes the day go great. Yeah. Even even if it's a rough day or a rough time or a patch in life, it's just— Optimism is not easy. And uh, if you're not optimistic, uh, you're missing out. Yeah, it's a choice. Yeah, it's exactly right. It is a choice. I've learned that. It's yeah. taken 50 years to learn yeah. it, but I've learned it. Don't ever tell let somebody tell you you're too optimistic or you're smiling too much. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> no, you shouldn't. I agree with you there. Yeah. So if it comes to sending your bacon to Rodeo Drive, knowing <laughs> that it could be some celebrity who's eating one slice of bacon, and that's their meal for the day in order to maintain their weight and fit in the clothes that are sold on Rodeo Drive, or helping the buddy down the street in Fairhope, Alabama, who says, hey, my in-laws are coming over and I want to show them, where are your priorities? Both. Both. Why, Good answer. Why, why not? I mean, uh, what? I mean, if somebody said that it's got to be everywhere and it's got to be everywhere right now, I'd have to I'd have to pace myself. It's like a lot of the distributors will say, "Hey, we've got a purchase order. We need X amount of cases," and I'm like, "Slow down. We're gonna we're gonna I'm gonna send you half of that this week, and then the other half the next week, and and it always works out." Yeah. So these hog farmers have got to love you. The first time you <laughs> approached them, they probably went, "Ah, sure, whatever, pal." What I love about them is. They really want to be. They wanted to be an American product. Um, you, you know, the largest pork producer in America was bought by the Chinese. Didn't know that. And no. I'm not anti anybody, but you know, when 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 that when that happened, that changed our whole industry. So, um, you know, a lot of people want to buy American. And, you know. I try my best to do that. So these hog producers are going, this one's for the home team, I Billy. think so, yeah. And they're, they're so much fun when I get to talk to them. Yeah. Because 
they're doing what they love. These aren't like just somebody said, hey, let's start a hog farm. These are third, fourth generation farming families yeah. that, that um, you know, the goal is for them to raise something. I mean, it's one thing to make something, but it's another thing to raise an animal. I yeah. mean, that's, we, we really have to take care of our farmers across this country. They are our lifeblood. You, yeah, I agree with you. I agree with you 100% there. Do you have a goal someday of if my bacon could get served in the White House? Buckingham Palace, sure. uh, you know, the United Nations or something like that. I'm a Neil Armstrong fan. And if you go back and Google the first meals that they had when they went to the moon, bacon was one of them. Really? I would like to replicate that. You would like somebody to come from yeah. space or from the moon and have bacon upon arrival? Well, of course. That's, you know, <laughs> always ready for that. I keep a case to the side, you know. But, uh, <laughs> but if, 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 you know, next time we go to the moon or, or go to, you know, every time we go to space, how do I get some Billy's bacon on there? That's awesome. Why not? I, I'm sure you have a bumper sticker or a vinyl sticker you can put on the space station. I more, I, you know, I, I do. Yes, I yeah. bet you do. Yeah. Just reach out the window, pal, and stick it That's on when you get up there. Exactly right. That's awesome. That yeah. would be great. So, I mean, yeah, but other other goals, um, I, you know, I would I, I would like to see it and uh, on a cool cruise line, you know, and not, maybe not all the time, but you know, you know, them serving it. I, what I really love is when I go to a really high end cool resort, like let's say the Marriott Grand Hotel, and they're serving it. Like a prime rib. You're going to the carving station and there's the roast beef over here, the steamship round and the big turkey over here. And there's Billy's bacon sitting there in all its glory with the big lamp it, shining on it like a spotlight. Yeah. And then there's a gentleman or a lady behind it with a white coat on and a, and a big carving fork and knife. And they're slicing it like – I mean that's treating it like I, like I created it. Yeah. Yeah. Do you just – does your chest puff out and you pound your chest like Tarzan when that happens? Look nope. at me now. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly uh, right. You get excited about this. Yeah. I really – I am having so much fun. Yeah. Um, and we got a long ways to go and, and we need more people. I mean it's, it's a really wild industry right now. I mean we're, we need more people and we're, we're going to get there. Well, when I – before we close it down. When I contacted you a couple of weeks ago and I wanted to get some of this and have it again because I knew you were going to come on the show and taste it, you told me to do something in order to facilitate that. Repeat that to me. Yeah. I, you know, it's, it's available all throughout uh, the, 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 the Gulf Coast area. But what helps is – because there's so many brands in the grocery industry. What really helps is if you would go into – your local r grocery store or meat market and say, do you carry Billy's bacon? Ask the general manager and ask the meat manager. Um, and if they say, no, I haven't heard of it, tell my story. Yeah. And and let them know. They can easily get it through most any distributor around here. And if, if it's not one of the – if they use distributors that I don't have, I can make that I – can, I can fix that. Yeah. I walked in to Rouse's and said, I'm looking for Billy. I went to the general manager and then to the meat manager and said, I'm looking for Billy's bacon. And they led me to the cooler where it was. And I said, this is it. And he said, man, we love this stuff. We, you know, when people see it, they buy it, which I think right. kind of the challenge yeah. that you have is putting it where they will see it. That's right. Oh, and a, a, another thing I had to fight in the beginning was I, my wrapper doesn't have a window. Oh, that's right. And when I was doing my study at the beginning, I so many butchers and meat managers said, you're never going to sell this because it doesn't have a window. Well, it's working without a window. Yeah. Well, there's mainstream and then there's craft, right. which usually does something different. Yeah. Billy Stitt is the owner of Billy's Bacon. It's a craft bacon. A small batch is the correct term, bacon. It's made in Fairhope, Alabama. It's uh, Tell me a bit again who sings to the bacon as it cures. Anyone who wants to, just yeah. come on in, plug in on our on our stage, and, and, and sing a little ditty to it. Yeah, I think it's great that you sing to the bacon. I th undoubtedly, that's a key part of the aging process. Big time. Is there any music that you find does better or more poorly to the bacon? I have a hunch that if the bacon were to hear the eagles, it would spoil. 
It possibly could. Yeah. I'm, I'm a Mississippi Delta blues guy. There you go. And I, 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 I like the just the soulfulness of it and the just the laid back. Yeah. And it just I think it really makes the bacon flourish. I'm glad to hear you say that. Yeah. I, that helped you. You've gained esteem in my world and <laughs> my pantheon of people. You've awesome. gained esteem. You can find his bacon at. The grocery stores around here, as he said, if you can't find it, ask for it. And folks, if you haven't tried it, I promise you, this is going to change you. Your life will have a clear before and after, and the after will be glorious based on your first bite of this bacon. Billy, thank you for your time. Thank you. We'll be back after this break with final comments. You're listening to What's Working. I'm David Nelson, brewmaster and owner of Braided River Brewing. We want beer that goes along no matter where the adventure takes us and that doesn't make us choose between great beer and drinkability. We're drawn to the Delta and united by beer because to us, the best way to celebrate the Delta is to slow down and savor the moments and the beer together. Come visit our tap room in downtown Mobile and ask for us at your favorite bar or restaurant. Visit online at braidedriverbrewing.com. At Spring Hill Toyota, it's just that easy. From our three-day exchange to free car washes, the benefits of the Spring Hill Advantage make the choice easy to see. We make it easy to own. Every vehicle comes with Toyota Care, plus our no-cost maintenance plan with free tire rotations and oil changes for four years. Get peace of mind with free roadside assistance 24-7. And don't forget, it's easy to buy your car 100% online. Visit SpringHillToyota.com today. It's just that easy. Hey, this is Cam. Thanks for listening, and I hope you're really enjoying the podcast. Do me a favor and search for Cam Marston on your social media outlets and like us or follow us or whatever is the right thing to do. Also, if you know others who'd benefit from the podcast, please forward it on to them and encourage them to listen. If you're so inclined, we'd love your rating on Apple Podcasts or wherever you get your podcasts. Those ratings matter. Finally, don't be a stranger. Email me with your comments, your feedback, your thoughts, your show ideas, whatever. Cam, C-A-M, at cammarston.com. I'd love to hear from you. Again, thank you very much for listening. Now, back to the show. Folks, it would be wrong to talk about a powerful trend like bacon in the marketplace and the the, the people's rabid consumption of this stuff without talking about some of the other trends that people who are paid to kind of watch out for them and frankly, avoid them uh, and how they can help you. I'm speaking here specifically of my buddies, Jamie Sandifer and Mark Sawyers with Sandifer Wealth Management. In the financial services world, there are a lot of people that will try to sell you trends of things that they see going through the roof. Buy low, sell high. Here's a, here's a stock that's going about to explode, or here's what we predict gold to do in the future. All this kind of stuff. These are very sexy and attractive trends out there designed to get your attention. However, If you're looking for two people that want to take care of your future, if you're looking for two people that really want to get to know you well, treat you wonderfully well, help you build your goals, your dreams, your retirement, whatever it may be, I want you to check out Sander for Wealth Management. Here's what you need to know about them. They are a fiduciary. They put you first. Your interests, your goals, they'll get to know you and what your interests and goals are, and they'll build a plan around that. Second, they're certified financial planners, CFP. In my advice, you should avoid doing any business unless it's with a CFP. Both Jamie and Mark are CFPs. Finally, they've been around since 1982. They're experienced, polished professionals. What it means is they can identify a trend or they know the principles of what it takes to be successful. They are going to focus on the principles that are necessary for you to be successful. Give them a call at 340-1984. That's area code 251-340-1984 or visit them at sandiferwealth.com. Let's sum it up today. What did we learn? We learned that there's a guy out there who has a passion, and his passion has been with him for a long time of figuring out the most perfect curing process 
for bacon. And I loved how he was a little bit cagey about what the ingredients are. He was a little bit cagey about how many bellies he buys every year. It means something's going on that he needs to keep close to the vest. And you just got to love a guy who's got a plan and doesn't completely show the hand, but only makes you more curious about what it will be. I'm telling you this. I became a fan of Billy's Bacon first. I became a fan of Billy Stitt in my interview with him. He's as good as his bacon, solid to the core. And I want you to do yourself a favor. If you're local, give it a try. Go to the store, ask for it. If you're not local to Mobile, Alabama, find Billy's Bacon online and order some up for you. I'm going to bring a bunch to my wife's family's beach trip that's held on the North Carolina coast every summer and introduce them to this stuff. I know they're going to love it. That wraps us up. Show is produced by John Thompson with Eye on Digital. I'm the guy that prevents him from going to Horn Island and drinking beer all day. I'm sorry, John, but I need you. We'll be back next week with another show. You're listening to What's Working. <laughs>